Spring has sprung. The Red Sox are undefeated in spring training. All seems to be right in the world. So there is a lot of good news to talk about on today's episode of Locked on Red Sox. Happy Wednesday to all you lovely people. I am Nessun's Lauren Campbell. I will be your host today of Locked on Red Sox. Alongside me, as always, is my co-host, Massachusetts Pirates team insider, Jake Ignazuski. We have a lot to get to in today's episode. We will get Jake's reaction from the reported Trevor Story deal that happened over the weekend. We have some arbitration talks that Red Sox did pretty good today, including Raphael Devers, which was a big thing people were talking about all day. And we have some breakout candidates that we're going to discuss. We got some awesome answers on Twitter. So we're super excited to get into this episode. So let's just hop to it. You are locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So over the weekend, Trevor Story reportedly agreed to a six-year deal with the Red Sox worth $140 million. It still has yet to be official, but I can see that happening Later Wednesday, um, he does have a locker down at JetBlue Park. I think it's just a matter of the Red Sox are on the road and they want to do it when they're quote unquote at home at JetBlue. Um, so I gave my reaction on a bonus episode, super excited about it. Definitely bolsters this lineup. Uh, Jake was busy on Sunday. He was working for the Pirates and enjoying the, the Southie parade and he wasn't able to give his reaction. So I want to start with that about just when you saw the news, I knew you were jazzed. We were texting about it. Um, but overall, just what does this do for the team? Just how are you feeling about it and how excited are you to see Trevor story in a Red Sox uniform? So going into Sunday, as you mentioned on the Monday episode that we came out with yesterday um, that we recorded on Saturday, we weren't super duper optimistic about this signing actually coming all together. You know, obviously with Carlos Correa signing with the Twins, in my mind, I wanted, uh, I tried to do everything possible to help manifest this signing happen. You know, I, I did the little praying circle thing on Twitter with the Red Sox, please sign Trevor Store. You know, and the was, candles got messed up on that too. <laughs> see, I don't know what's going on with that in Twitter. I think it's a little bit of ghost somewhere or something like that. But uh, I was on my way to uh, the train station. As you mentioned, you know, I, I was going to the uh, Southie uh, St. Patty's Day Parade and, you know, the. <clears throat> notification from Bob Nightingale came up and I I remember I, I can flash back right now I, I was like no way there is no way and you know un- unfortunately like you know you know as we've talked about before there has been times where um, unfortunately Bob Nightingale hasn't gotten the signing 100% accurately so I, I was waiting for somebody else to confirm and once somebody else confirmed you know like passing Ken Rosenthal as well as uh, Jim Bowden I, I couldn't believe that it was official. And after that, I was just waiting for the numbers to come out. How much were the Red Sox paying him? How many years? You know, was it a one, two? You know, it was reported that we could potentially sign him to a shorter term type of deal. Uh, and once it came out, that it was 23 million. You know, I just thought in my mind, you know, Heim was able to work his magic. And especially with the interesting sort of opt out, you know, I don't know about you. I've never seen anything like that where, you know, He has the ability to opt out, but the Red Sox also have the ability to um, overturn that opt out and say, no, we're not going to allow you to opt out, but we're going to give you a seventh year. And 20 more million. So I think exactly. like it really works out in both of their favors. Like they, the Red Sox are able to keep a good player in Trevor Story for potentially a, a seven years total after the fourth year. And I think overall, it, it's really good. I'm, I'm excited to see. The, the, you know, just the smaller things. I'm excited to see him address the media. I'm excited to see what number he wears. And I'm excited to see how he does at second base. That's all the reports out there that he will play second. Um, that he could have gone back to the Rockies, but he wants to win. And I think that's a great mentality to have coming in here. I think Red Sox fans are going to love him. And that's the one thing that I was curious on if it was going to be the hindering factor on if he would sign with the team or not was that second base position. You know, it, all, tons of reports were coming out that, you know, he wanted to stay at shortstop. But, you know, even though, and you said this in the in your bonus episode as well, you know, nobody wants to Sandra Bogarts to leave. Nobody wants him to opt out and sign with another team. Everybody wants him and Rafael Devers to play for the Red Sox for the rest of their career. But Trevor Story is a backup plan. You know, if it, Xander Bogars does look to try and get a Carlos Correa or a Corey Seager type of deal. 
the Red Sox do have that backup plan of Seager, or excuse me, of Story, who's able to play that shortstop position. And what's nice as well is, you know, he also brings a lot of speed. You know, not not a lot of people realize he stole 20 bases last season. Most people look at him as a power hitting uh, player. And, you know, he does that as well. And as you mentioned, you know, I think Red Sox fans are going to be really excited watching him night in, night out with the bat flips that he has, you know, with the energy that he plays with. And, you know, kind of like Kyle Schwarber did, I think he's going to fit perfectly within this Red Red Sox personality in this Red Sox clubhouse. And, uh, you know, I, I can't wait for him to put that jersey on uh, for the first time and put that Red Sox hat on for the first time. I love the swaps, but I'm excited to see it in person. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Hopefully that news becomes official Wednesday. I know fans are starting to get antsy, but I think, like I said, I think it's just a matter of the Red Sox just want to be at JetBlue Park when they do it and when they introduce him and get all those questions out of the way. Um, so the Red Sox had a busy Tuesday. Not only did they improve to 6-0 in in spring training games, Rich Hill looked pretty good. Garrett Whitlock looked pretty good. They were pretty busy on the arbitration side of things. Today was the deadline to get deals done. And the Red Sox, like I said, they were busy. They agreed to, or they avoided arbitration with Alex Verdugo. He's just over $3 million. Nick Pavetta, just over $2 mil. Josh Taylor, $1, one million and change. Ryan Brazier, Kevin Ploiecki, and Christian Arroyo also all avoided arbitration. And the biggest name on there is Raphael Devers. And at first, it looked like they were going to go to a hearing. Twitter was losing their collective minds because they were like, you know, you saw how, how this worked out with Mookie. Why aren't you signing him to an extension? And we've talked about this before, about his extension. And he does want to be here. But it's just a matter of what is his future with the Red Sox? Because I think that is going to determine a lot of his his contract extension. But he did agree to our arbitration. So it's $11.2 million for the 2022 season. And like I said, it looked like they were going to go to a hearing. And they avoided that. So that's obviously good news. And I think that's really good for the Red Sox, obviously, to hopefully avoid any tension. I, I can't imagine bringing your team to a, an arbitration hearing is is any fun. But you, these players do want to get paid what they're worth. They are represented by strong people, especially, you know, when Scott Boris is out there, he's going to get the most out of his clients. Um, but overall, I think it's good news to lock everyone up. I think that it was smart. I don't think anyone was really overpaid here. And I think Devers obviously was the most important. And to avoid arbitration might avoid things getting kind of sticky down the line with a potential contract extension. I mean, when you look at the all these price points, I mean, Nick Pavetta, a number three starter for the team, two point six five million dollars. Like that, that's that's such a deal. And Devers as well. You know, he's a twenty five million dollar, thirty maybe even forty million dollar caliber type of player, and he's getting eleven point two million dollars. Now, I mean. He's a free agent after 2023, and we've talked about this. Like you mentioned, you know, it's super duper important for them to start working on these contract extension talks. And I don't really see him being open to the, to the fact, like we've seen other players do, they want to focus on the season. They don't want to talk about their contract during the season. So it, it could, could it hurt the Red Sox in the long run, waiting till after this season to where his – value could skyrocket even more you know he could hit 45 50 home runs you know he could be even better than he was last year and uh that could make him demand one even more but you know one name that i know you lauren were super duper excited about when when they agree with the arbitration he's back with the team is ryan brazier i mean i i think i think he's getting paid way I think he needs to be paid probably like $7 million close to what the top relievers are getting. I think 1.4 is a little bit too low for a guy of his type of caliber. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. I'm going to end this recording right now. Kick you out of this room. Stop it. <laughs> no, but I mean, it. he is what he is. This is a good time for him to try to bounce back. And like there's what he went through last year in his personal life, I'm never going to hold that against him, but he just couldn't, it just seemed after he got hit in the head, unfortunately, it was just really hard for him to bounce back. And hopefully he can put that all behind him and he can have a really, really good off season and just really get himself right. I want to see him do well because I don't want to be on this pod every week complaining about him. I don't like complaining. I'm not a complainer. I, I like to be happy, but he makes it difficult sometimes. But <laughs> overall, I think that the Red Sox did a good job here. And they were also kind of busy on the waiver wire. They claimed right-hander Kyle Tyler off waivers from the Angels 
just, you know, like the others, uh, other moves they've made. It was just a depth move. He made his big league debut last season. He did 12, uh, toss 12 and a third innings out of the bullpen, 366 ERA, 25.3% strikeout rate. And he tossed uh, 86, 86 innings between double A AA and triple A. Um, he's okay. I, I mean, it's a good, good signing. They did designate Hudson Potts to, for assignment for, or to make room on the roster for Kyle Tyler. He was optioned to Worcester right away. Um, and I, I, I like this. He does have a Boston connection. He was traded to Boston in 2020's Mitch Moreland swap. Um, no, I'm just kidding. That was Hudson Potts. That was not Kyle Tyler. Um, I'm reading too fast on my notes here, but Kyle Tyler, I think is a, a good depth move. He'll, he'll go to Worcester. He'll, hopefully pitch well there. I think that Worcester is a really good starting point for him. And he just made his big league debut last year. I don't think people are expecting Cy Young winner, uh, numbers out of him. I don't think people are expecting, you know, sub one ERA out of the bullpen, but I, I am excited to see what he can do. I like that. I, I like when Red Sox claim people off waivers because then I'm just like, I want to do deep dives on these people. Yeah, Heimblum loves the waiver wire, wire, excuse me. You know, it didn't work out too, too well for him uh, during 2020. But one guy that, you know, I'll never forget that he snatched from the waiver wire is Christian Arroyo. And look how he's worked out for the team. And uh, I, I think, like you mentioned, you know, this is just another depth move, kind of like we mentioned with the minor league signings, like a Darren Hall, Derek Holland. It's, it's these guys who, if players get injured, you know, they're able to call him up and, you know, it's it's people who the Red Sox can rely on to be sort of in that taxi squad if, if you, that they called it last year um, to be able to come up and help out the team for a little bit. But I mean, when you look at his stats from AAA and AA, uh, you know, the one thing that stands out to me is the 6.8 percent walk rate. You know, he, he does a good job of throwing strikes. Um yeah. And like you mentioned, he's he's still relatively young and uh, 25 years old, and he he was he was a 20th round pick, so um, he's exceeding expectations in those types of terms. But especially for Hudson Potts, I, I mean, you get him from a, a Mitch Moreland swap, and when you look at it, 32.8 percent strikeout rate. So he's a guy that needs a lot more time in the minors. Uh, he is a former first rounder, hasn't really lived up to that potential um, that he was pegged on going into the draft. And so, I, as you mentioned, it's, it's a small little move, but but any, anything that the Red Sox can do to add to their depth chart, especially in the pitching department, uh, I'm all for. Yeah, especially with reportedly signing Trevor Story, they bolster their lineup and that helps the lineup, but it does not obviously help the pitching. And I think anyone they can get to, to hopefully build their depth and Kyle Tyler is low risk, high reward. So, and like you always said, in high we trust. So I he he's had success on the waiver wire. Let's hope that it still continues this way. But we will get into our breakout candidates, which none of them that we got on Twitter include Kyle Tyler, but maybe they will down the line. But first, I do want to tell you about Built Bar because it's that time of the year again. It's almost April. Usually my New Year's resolutions are out the window, but not this year. I am sticking to my resolution to eat right, and Built Bar makes that super easy. The Bilt Bar Puffs are really, really good, and you, if you have not tried them, you are missing out. They're the first ever protein-infused marshmallow, so they're they're yummy, they're fluffy, they're obviously marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar, they're like a little treat, and they are covered in 100% real chocolate. All Bilt Bars, in fact, are covered in 100% real chocolate. They're low calorie, they're high protein. Go to Bilt.com, check out their macros list, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. And there's a flavor for everyone. Mint brownie, coconut almond, my personal favorite, cookies and cream. Head on over to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Head on over and take a listen to Locked on MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So going into the 2022 season, the Red Sox have a lot of players that could be or that have the potential to be breakout candidates. And before we get to the answers that we got on Twitter, we got a ton of great answers. I'm super excited to see them. I did want to get Jake, who you think will be the Red Sox 2020 breakout candidate. 2022. I, mean, I, I said 2020. <laughs> 
I mean, I think one guy who who's listed on here a few times, and he was somebody who came to mind immediately, uh, is Tanner Houck. You know, it, it was announced uh, yesterday that uh, he will be in the rotation this season to start the season uh, due to uh, Chris Sale's injury. And he's, he's a guy who I, I think uh, coming up uh, – <clears throat> wasn't as highly regarded um, as I think he deserves. And I think one thing that hinders him a little bit is uh, having a strong third pitch. That's something that we saw, especially when he would go around the third time in the order, he did struggle with a little bit. Um, But something that, you know, we see on a night in night out basis with him is that he puts everything into every single inning that he does everything, excuse me, every, every single inning that he pitches. And he's got a great slider, great fastball, great command, um, especially for a young pitcher. He does a good job of not walking guys. And especially uh, some of the comparisons that people make to that slider of a right-handed Chris Sale. Yep. Uh, I, th- I think he's I think he's destined to have a breakout season, especially with the opportunity of now being in the rotation. And also the one thing that you got to think about is now he's not going up every other day. You know, remember last year when Heim would literally call him up, put him back down, call him up, send him back down. And that can mess with a guy mentally a little bit and not being able to fully get into the groove of being on a a regular uh, on an MLB roster on a regular basis. And so I think he's definitely a guy who uh, is definitely going to break out. Definitely. And I think that getting him some consistency and not being up and down, he was optioned seven times. He had a great mindset through the whole thing. He was so positive. He put a lot into like his faith and just being like, this is, this is what I have to deal with. But if he can get into a really legitimate routine, either as a starter and stay with a starter or a starter, and then be like, never mind, you're going to go to the bullpen and stay there. I think it's going to do wonders for him. They haven't called this guy the right-handed Chris Sale for nothing, and I do have a lot of faith that he'll be a really strong X factor for the Red Sox. I also was going to say Tanner Houck, but for the sake of saying something different, and we didn't get this answer on um, on our tweet, I'm going to say Chris Sale. And that might sound silly because he's a veteran. He's one of the uh, an incredible MLB pitcher, but he hasn't been healthy in, what, three seasons He was supposed to really come back this year from his first full season from Tommy John. It's not going to happen because he has the stress fracture in his rib. So I think this is a really good season for him to bounce back, contribute the way that he knows he can contribute, the way he wants to contribute, and return to the Chris Sale that we know he can be. So I'm hoping... I'm, you know, I, I'm optimistic with his recovery, but also I know how tricky stress fractures can be. They, you have to be incredibly careful with them. And if we don't see him till May or June, he can still provide so much good for this team and so much depth. You know, going not depth, but going into going longer into games, and he's going to want to fight for that mound every single chance he gets. So I'm going to go with Chris Sale and. I like I said I was going to say Tanner Houck, but I'll go with 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 Chris Sale because there's going to be a lot of eyes on him for several reasons. Um, but I some just of get our flashbacks answers- from uh, <laughs> last game last season against the Orioles. Um, I forget how many runs he gave up, but I, I I remember I was just thinking like, you know, obviously he's recovering from Tommy John surgery, but you know, where's the old Chris Sale? The guy right. when, when you when you would see him on the mound, you would get all cocky. Oh, he's going to strike out everybody and especially with the dominance that he would have night in night out on the mound um i'm excited for that to come back and for that to confidence to come back and i think what the red sox need to do sort of how they did with tommy john is be cautious with him coming back you know don't rush him back and into where he might um you know fall into those sort of struggles that he did at the end of last season and I think too, we saw some, we saw flashes of vintage Chris Sale when he did return. We saw that energy he can bring in. I think it was the ALCS when he's screaming into his glove and he's just so amped. And it's just, we know that that Chris Sale is in there. And it's just a matter of him getting healthy, not rushing anything. We know what kind of person he is and he wants to be out there at the second he can. But I'm I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful for him this season. And some other people or some other players that people are hopeful for. Uh, a lot of Tanner Houck on our on our list here. So Holly M said Tanner Houck, big Sox guy, our loyal follower and listener said JBJ because he thinks too many people are sleeping on him. That's a good one too because like JBJ 
we know who, who he is offensively, but I think that people aren't too excited about him coming back simply because he was traded for Hunter Renfro. But you can never deny that defense. Derek Maguire said Saramora, which honestly, I kind of forgot about him. I think he did get overused last season. So I'm really excited to see what he can do. Uh, Red Sox fan said Matt Barnes with less innings. I think that's fair. I think he was that's overused true. in the first half of the year. And we certainly saw that in the second half. Uh, Noah Martell, your your pal there, Noah, said Bobby Delbeck and Tanner Houck. Uh, good one with Bobby D. I think he's got a lot of eyes on him, especially with Cassis right there. He's almost ready. Greg La Lapham, Lapham, sorry if I say that wrong, is said Ta Tanner Houck. Corbin Provost oh, said Bobby Delbeck. Depressed Red Sox fan, cheer up, pal, said Christian Vasquez. Another really good one, kind of under the radar, kind of didn't he didn't really have the best season last year. So I like that one. That's a really good one. And Luke Tobin rounds us out. He said Alex Verdugo and Nick Pavetta. Verdugo, 100%. I think he needs to really come into who he is this year. And Nick Pavetta, I think, yeah, I, I like that one too. I think he started the season so strong, starting the season 5-0 and and then kind of falling off, but then dominating out of the bullpen. I, I, I like that. I, I think we got some really, really good answers here. Oh, yeah, I want to take a second to focus on Verdugo and Pavetta because I think especially with Verdugo, something that I brought up during Tyler's episode that, you know, I just realized and I don't think a lot of people fully realize is last season was his first full major league season. Right. And, uh, you know, you didn't really see too many flashes of the power, but that's not really who Alex Verdugo is. He's, he's more of a get on base, help the team score runs to get the next guy over. And um, I think obviously one thing that, he needs to focus on a little bit better is uh, that defense. But now that he'll be in one place in left field, I think he has a lot of experience out there. And um, I, I think that he's going to be able to get comfortable. But also with a guy like Nick Pavetta, too. I mean, pitching three innings, what was it, two days ago, striking out five. and um, yeah, Perfect you know, all innings. His, yeah, all of his pitches looked filthy. And yeah. you know, I, th I think with him uh, – you know, we saw so many flashes of him doing very well last season. He had multiple um, one hitters, uh, a few of them that that were um, close to no hitters. And I, I'll never forget when he outdueled uh, Jacob Degrom. You know, he'll, yeah. he'll always be able to tell his grand grandkids that. Um, but I, I, I think he, both of those guys are really good answers because they're two guys who were um, who have a lot of potential to be able to uh, really show how good of players that they are. Yeah, and I think there is a lot of pressure around Verdugo. I think there always will be simply because he was that centerpiece in the Mookie trade. So I think that people will always have their eyes on him. But he's also a lot of fun. He's a, you know, he brings that energy. He wants to play baseball. He's like a little kid out there. He just wants to play. And, you know, Nick Pavetta, too. He I love the way he holds himself accountable after every single start. And it's I, I've mentioned this before too. It's very Rick Porcello esque, where it's I sucked. I need to get better. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what. Hopefully, it's fixed by my next start, but I, I can't do that again because I'm going to cost the team some games. Um, so I'm I'm super excited to see him, and I love a fellow Canadian pitcher. So I'm absolutely rooting for Pavetta to do a really solid job and just kind of solidify himself as the right now the the number two pitcher because he'll he'll go after Evaldi. And side note, Alex Cora said Nate Evaldi will pitch against Erod in Detroit. He said that Tuesday. So I'm super excited for that Detroit. matchup because Erod's, you know, Erod is solid. And if Nate Evaldi can do what he did last year, that's gonna be a very, very good matchup. So I'm very excited for that. We do have one more segment to get to. We will end this show as we always do with our mental health minute. But Jake tried Athletic Greens and he just wants to tell you about them really quick. So, yeah, I mean, Athletic Greens, I, I tried it and came in this great box, especially sent to myself. And um, it's looking at it. Uh, you know, seeing the greens, it, it looks like a little bit of, of a smoothie. You know, you put it, you put in the powder, you stir it up a little bit and looking at it, it didn't, didn't look like it tastes that great. But once I drank it, it was super duper good. And I, I'm somebody who 
has had stomach issues uh, for like the last five years or so. And so I looked at this as a great way to help me uh, get better gut health. Um, and it's something where I, I've always wanted a supplement that like actually tastes good. And I wanted something that, you know, I could take on a daily basis. And with athletic greens, it's nice because you take it right before you eat. So then it's the first thing that you really digest and have in your system uh, right out of bed. And it's something that, like I mentioned, tastes really good. And so if you're asking yourself, like, what is this stuff? With, with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, and all those things. So why I love Athletic Greens is that I'm not only able to use it when I'm at home, but I'm also able to travel with it. And they also give you in the little box, they give you uh, this great little container that you can actually put the powder in. And it tastes good, like I mentioned, and it also makes you feel energized. It makes you feel a little bit more focused. And so that's why I like taking it before I go to work because I'm able to feel the goodness that I'm ingesting with Athletic Greens. And it also costs less than $3 a day you're investing in your health. And it's cheaper than a cold brew habit. And it also has over 7,000 five-star reviews. And just a little tidbit about Athletic Greens, it was created um, when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. And it cost him $100 a day. And he created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on your own. And that's something that I felt throughout these past five years is being able to find something that I can take daily, also have it be able to help my gut health and also be able to help me eat healthier and better throughout the day. And so right now is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Again, this is Athletic Greens slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So for our mental health minute in our final segment of Locked on Red Sox, thank you for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I was reminded last weekend that there are still good people in this world. I was at the Worcester St. Patrick's Day Parade, and much like the Southie one had been canceled the last two years due to COVID, I was so excited to see my friends. And this is really dumb of me. I don't carry a purse. I will put my credit card and my license in my pocket. I will zip it up or I'll put my stuff in my fiance's wallet. And that's just how I've always been. I live recklessly, apparently. And Living as I was edge. walking across the street, I must not have zipped my pocket because my credit card and my debit card fell out. I still had my ID and I was, it was like four o'clock. I was like, I have no idea where this could be because I didn't use it. So I knew like it wasn't at a bar that we had gone to. And I was like, well, there's nothing I can do. I'll just freeze my account through my through my apps and I'll figure it out Monday morning. I'll call and get everything situated. And after I get home, I'm just getting everything ready for Monday. And I get an Instagram DM from this girl and her husband. They both reached out. They both tried to call me on Instagram. And I have my phone was on Do Not Disturb. And I also have notifications off for Instagram. So I didn't see it. And she she found my debit card and credit card in a crosswalk in Worcester. And wow. she's like, I have your card. I be more than happy to meet you. She sent me a picture. She's like, I don't want you to think I'm weird, but I found them and I looked you up on Instagram, saw you were at the parade. So I'm hoping this is you. And it was, and I got my cards back. Uh, she's a wonderful woman. She deserves the a million good karma points for the rest of her life. And it just made me realize that it's there's still good people in this world. And I'll tell you, my anxiety went from like a million to zero when she messaged me and I opened that up. So there's still good people in this world. And I'm so grateful for that woman and her husband for finding and returning my stuff to me because 
it's so easy to, especially on St. Patrick's Day, walk into a bar, throw a tab, and then that's it. Yeah, that's amazing. And, uh, you know, it's tough sometimes to realize that there's still good people out there. And you, the one thing that you got to do is be that good person as well. Um, you know, good, good karma is, is uh, definitely real in my opinion. You know, if you, if you give out good things to the universe, the universe will bring great things back to you. Um, and so um, on a daily basis, if you just show up, try to be a good person, try to care for one another. Because, I mean, if you think about it, it that girl probably saw that and was thinking in her mind trying to um, – channel how you were feeling because and exactly. anytime somebody somebody loses uh an id or a credit card or a debit card something as important as that with your identity and, and also with with something that's so important to all of us which is our money which we work so hard for um i i think that um it's amazing what she did and you know one one thing that people can take away from this is try and do the same and e even if you know even if it's something small and you might not think that somebody is really going to appreciate it even if it's like you paying for somebody's like Dunkin donuts you opening the door for somebody else at the end of the day that person might have woken up and gotten the worst news of their life or been having a bad day and that little um small act of kindness could really uh change their mood yep you should you know be kind always just like you said you never know what someone's going through you never know what somebody's battling in their life in their mind so just be kind because you would want someone to be kind to you, especially if you knew you were going through something that no one else knows. I mean, we don't have little bubbles above our head that say like, oh, this person's having a bad day. This person got two hours of sleep. This person got passed up for a promotion. Like, We don't know what people are going through and we should always just try to, to be kind. But I think that's a great spot to end this week's or this today's episode of Locked on Red Sox. Thank you as always for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every day. Rate, review, and subscribe to Locked On Red Sox right here on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a review. Let us know what you want to hear. If you have any questions for us, shoot us a DM on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox, Jake at Jake Iggy, and then me at La 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's. Be sure to check back on Thursday. We have a very exciting guest coming for you for, for Thursday's episode that we cannot wait to release and tell you all about it. And now that you've made Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day, head on over to Locked On MLB because Paul Francis Sullivan, but please call him Sully, will bring you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. All the other Locked On shows are free and available wherever you consume your podcast activity. Locked On A's, Locked On Astros. Everyone's doing a really good job. We're all super hyped. Baseball is back. And until then, we will see you Thursday.